Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Trust in God's Good Control. So it's like this is a How to Trust in God's Good Control manual if you want to read it. So it's like I was having a vision last week. I was feeling kind of sick. I was laying on the floor, and I looked at this empty chair, and I was having this vision that Jesus was sitting in the chair. He looked like he was about six foot tall in his king outfit. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, how come I'm suffering on the floor here and you're not healing me or helping me or something, Jesus? Then I thought about, hmm, he only looks like he's about six foot tall. Maybe I'll ask him a question. <laughs> Jesus, how tall are you? <laughs> and he said something like, I'm as tall as the universe, Rod. And then I was thinking, well, why, if he's got so much power and stuff, that why am I laying on the floor suffering or something? Why doesn't he use this power to heal me and strengthen me and make me feel good or whatever? And so God's been teaching me some things since then about trusting in his good control. He's not asleep. He's not out of control or something. He's fully awake and fully in control. And he's taller than six foot. To try to get my mind wrapped around who God really is and how he can be good in an evil and suffering world like this. Last night I was having a dream where I was walking down the side of this, you know, sort of like a country road or something. I was trying to be careful not to get hit by a car or something. Then all of a sudden this huge truck comes out of nowhere and comes ramming right at me and I just sort of like, it just kind of miraculously kind of moves out of the way and misses me or something. And I start to get angry. What's going on here? Are these people trying to kill me or something? And then I kind of heard God's voice say something like, uh, well, um, they were trying to do you harm, but my angel stepped in and averted it. It's like uh, we keep forgetting about the angels giving charge over us, like guardian angels or something. I've been in situations where it looks like the, there was a car crash imminent, but all of a sudden, at the last minute, the cars moved out of the way or something. So even though we go through a lot of evil and suffering in life, it's like God's in full control of it. His wisdom is not like our wisdom, and Satan's trying to twist our wisdom, thinking God can't be good in an evil and suffering world or something. And we got to learn to fight that off. So I'll try to explain about how we can trust in God's good control in this world, in this evil and suffering world. So I'll try to get this vision sometimes of uh, I'm not alone. Like Jesus said, I'm not alone, my Father's with me. I could just pray to my Father and 12 legions of angels would rescue me from you, Roman governor official or whatever. And so we have to feel that way too. The Bible teaches God is with you wherever you go. The Bible teaches it's like we got spiritual bodyguards around us all the time. I'm not just alone. I got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the angels with me. That's what we need to believe. It's sort of like there's God and about two-thirds of the angels. And then there's like a third of the angels became demons with Satan. And then there's about 90% of the population want to be evil. It doesn't make for a very good or suffering-free world to live in. And then God's trying to deal with sin in our life, and sometimes he has to afflict us with a lot of suffering or temptation to try to get us to seek his help to get rid of that sin in our life. Like the scripture says, before I was afflicted with suffering, I went astray from God. But after I was afflicted, I got closer to God, which can be good for us. Temptation can be good for us. Physical suffering can be good for us. As long as it doesn't cause us to start believing Satan's lies, in the suffering that uh, God can't be good in this suffering. 
So it's like we have to understand what kind of a world it is after Adam sinned. It's like Satan became rebellious. He encouraged Adam to become rebellious towards God, and it created this cursed, evil, and suffering world to live in. God is good and loving and merciful and just and wrathful. And we have to seek his help to deal with this evil and suffering world. It's like a Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's like we got to take God's hand to help us through it. He's trying to rescue a few people, the remnant or something, from an evil and suffering world and try to prepare them for a good and suffering free heaven world to live in after they die. Because of God's love and mercy and because of his justice and wrath. The world has to be this way. It can't be any other way. He didn't want to create robots without a free will. He didn't want to wipe everybody out for their sins. He gave them a free will. He's trying to help a few that want his help to deal with the evil and suffering world. And uh, bring justice and punishment down on the rest that don't. The rebels, you want to follow Satan, you'll go to hell like Satan. And that's the choice that we have. To learn God's truth and believe God's truth. He's a good God. He's in control. It has to be an evil and suffering world. He can help us through it, bring good out of it for us. Then we can go to a good and suffering free heaven after we die. And that's the way it has to be. It's evil, it's suffering, but good God can help us through it, and good God's in control. So it's like when you read the Bible, it's like the stories of Abraham, Noah, Joseph, Moses. They're going through terrible suffering circumstances at the hands of evil people, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yet God's helping them through it, if they want his help to. Now, if you don't want God's help to, you just uh, destroy yourself in the evil and suffering world and go to hell when you die. So it's like God can be looking at Israel in slavery because of their sins and saying something like, I control this. I want to help you to deal with this. Or it could be, Abraham with the suffering of not being able to have a child and God trying to get Abraham to trust in him that uh, I can help you with your problem if you trust me or like uh, Israel going into slavery to Babylon like in the days of Daniel and God trying to say to Daniel I'm in control of this I want to help you through this I want to bring good out of this for you or Joseph being almost killed by his brothers and thrown into a pit or put into slavery or into prison and God's trying to say I'm not making a mistake Joseph this is my good plan for you in an evil and suffering world and then there's the Job story <laughs> Satan sifting Job like wheat it's like God saying to him you can still trust in me Job I'm good, and I'm in control. I can work this out for your good. If Job didn't go through the suffering he went through, he wouldn't have had the revelations of who God is in a greater way. It's like God's got to put us in a helpless situation beyond our control to show us how much he's in control instead. We're not supposed to be trying to trust in ourselves and trying to control everything ourselves. We're supposed to trust in God who controls everything around us instead. It may look like an evil and suffering out of control world and Satan's trying to lie to us in temptation when we're suffering. It's like when the suffering started up, the temptation started up to think God's not good in my suffering or something. And we got to keep resisting that like Job did. No, I'm going to trust him even though it feels like he's slaying me. I'm going to trust him in slavery to Babylon for 70 years. I'm going to trust him in the wilderness for 40 years without any food or clothing. To take care of me. I'm going to trust him at the Red Sea with the armies coming to slay me. 
And God is right there when you need him with his great power to help you through these things. When a truck's coming at you, ready to kill you, God could send an angel to move the truck out of the way. That I'm not alone, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the angels are here, what do I got to fear? So he wants us to have that kind of trust in him when Satan's attacking us, Satan's sifting us like wheat, like a Job experience. <laughs> Goliath's coming at us. Not to say, God, you must be asleep, there's a giant coming after me. God, you must be asleep, the whole Pharaoh's army's coming after me or something. No, God's fully awake. He's putting you through a test, a trial, to try to test your faith in him, to trust your love for him through it. What do you mean i got to go to a cross now? Are you sure, God? Yeah, uh, take up your cross, learn obedience to suffering like Jesus did. Not to be surprised by these suffering trials. Not to be surprised by these satanic thoughts that God can't be good in this situation or something. No, you could be walking through Sodom and Gomorrah holding God's hand. You could be like Noah in the ark holding God's hand. God's right there to try to help you through this evil and suffering world, not destroy you in this evil and suffering world. Put you in the fiery furnace, but not let you get burned. Put you in the lion's den, but not let you get eaten. Put you in the desert for 40 years, but not let you starve to death. There's nothing too difficult for God to do, but he wants to test us in suffering circumstances, in temptation circumstances. Not to trust him in difficult times, and we got to keep resisting that. No, God has taken good care of me for 60 years. He'll continue to take care of me. Get out of my way, Satan, or whatever. I'm not going to believe your lies. God is asleep, or he doesn't care, or something. No, God's in full control. This may be like a Job experience, but yet he slay me. Yeah, well, I trust him. Ask me to sacrifice my son for him. He must have a good reason. Let's do it. I trust in God. That's what God wants. He's trying to get a few people prepared for his heavenly kingdom forever. And uh, going through these fiery trials builds our faith in him and our love for him, which he delights in. Though we're loving him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Though we're trusting him, even though it seems like he's slaying us. So we got to not look at the evil and suffering going on in this world and let it bother us. Let it bother our faith. Most people, when this trouble hits, when the judgments get greater in the future, will just apostatize from God. They're like the children of Israel. They see miracles one day, and then the next day they're abandoning God because they got some little suffering in their life. And Satan's trying to get people to believe in a false god or something, a genie god or something, like a health and wealth prosperity god or something that doesn't exist. <laughs> And that just causes people to apostatize when they lose everything. <laughs> but we could have everything taken away from us, be in a rat and fasted prison for two years, and still be full of joy <laughs> with perfect Papa God with us in the prison, with perfect husband Jesus with us in the prison. We have to hear God's prophetic voice, not just read about God. I'm with you always. Well, I don't, I'm not sure. No, we hear, got to hear God saying, I am with you always, Moses. Believe me, Rod, or something. We got to hear God speak his word to us in our heart to believe in it. I am always with you. I am good. I'm in full control. <laughs> You're in an evil suffering world, but I can help you through it, bring good out of it for you, make you happy in it, help you not to be bothered by it. You don't have to let this bother you. You're safe with me. You got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and angels with you. It may be difficult, but God's power is greater than this evil and suffering world or Satan. So sometimes it's like, God says to me that this world is like a prosperous, rich man going to hell world. <laughs> they think that's the way to success, but that's the way to hell and failure. And the person that's struggling and dependent on God for food and clothing daily or something like that, and has faith in God, they're the successful ones. We're not supposed to look on the outside. There's a person in a wheelchair or there's a person with back pain that can't work or something. We're supposed to look at the heart. How much faith do they got 
in God during these Job type trials or whatever, because these are the kind of people that God's going to make kings and priests in this heavenly kingdom forever after they die. And the rich people that look like they are successful on earth are all going to hell forever to get nothing forever in hell. The technology in heaven will be a billion times greater than the technology on the earth, and the technology in hell will be zero. <laughs> I can't even get a drink of water. I'm tormented in this flame with no way to stop it. Because they treated God that way. They wanted to be God like Satan, and they went to hell with Satan or whatever. God's trying to put affliction in our life to humble us, to show us that we're not God. Get that selfish, God-playing nature out of us, and sometimes it takes a lot of suffering and trials to get it out of us for our good. Like the scripture says, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now that I'm afflicted, I obey your commandments. God sees people going to hell. He says, I'm trying to stop them from doing that, and sometimes i got to use sledgehammers on them. It's like a vision I had. I was in a chicken restaurant with Jesus sitting in the booth, and I looked over at a table, and there was a great big fat guy eating a chicken dinner there. And then all of a sudden an angel comes out of nowhere with a sledgehammer and he smashes the plate of chicken food off his table and he smashes his wallet off the table and then he hits the guy in the head and he's all sore and in pain or something like that. I look to Jesus and I say, what's going on here? He says, Jesus says to me, that's good for him. That this judgment coming where God's going to take the money away. It's like a vision I had talking to Jesus on a park bench one time, and I asked Jesus, what does the future look like, Jesus? And he said, economic collapse, famine, rioting, and World War III. And I said to Jesus, that doesn't sound so good. And then the vision turned into me dancing with Jesus around World War III, and there was like tanks and people getting shot and everything. So like watching it on TV or something. And I dance with Jesus around this. And I look to Jesus and he just says to me, Don't let it bother you, Rod. I control this. I control this. God's not out of control. All the evil and suffering going on in the world. In the days of Noah, God wasn't out of control. He's not out of control today. The Job story, he wasn't out of control. He was in full control. In our lives, he's in full control with the evil and suffering around us. He wants to allow people to make free will choices. It creates an evil and suffering world, but he can help you through it, bring good out of it for you, make you happy in it, help you not to be bothered by it. Don't let it bother you, Rod. I control it. And then I had this vision of Jesus with a sledgehammer hitting somebody on the railroad tracks that was asleep or something. And there's a locomotive coming, ready to crush this guy in the tracks unless he wakes up. It's like the locomotive of hell or something coming. And, and then I asked Jesus about the vision. He says, well, I got to really put a lot of pain and suffering in people's lives to try to wake them up and seek my help to get off the railroad tracks. So if they think they can save themselves with their good works, they don't get saved through my cross or whatever. Hell is uh, coming for them, like on the railroad tracks. And unless they start to wake up and see the need for me to save them from the railroad tracks or the locomotive of God's wrath, they don't get saved. The locomotive of God's wrath, hell hits them and they have to suffer that. And Jesus is trying to save us from that. It's a free gift. Get off the tracks through the cross of Jesus Christ. Get saved from hell through the cross of Jesus Christ and people are choosing not to do that. Every day people are dying and going to hell forever. People could drop dead and be in hell by supper time forever and they don't have a, a knowledge that hey i need to get saved because <laughs> saints tell them you don't need to get saved christianity is not true there is no hell and they believe whatever saints tell them but the person that's close to god understands there is a hell <laughs> jesus said so and i do need to get saved through a cross else i'm going there and get saved from that stuff your sins separate you from god Getting your sins forgiven through the cross can bring you closer to God. And so can affliction in our life bring us closer to God. Like a prodigal son waking up, coming to his senses at a pig pen of sin to starvation or something, trial, and going back to his father for food or whatever. Going back to God for 
fulfillment. In God's presence is the fullness of joy. There's perfect peace, trusting in God. God's not asleep in this evil and suffering world. He's fully awake, and he wants to work with you to bring good out of it for you, like holding Noah's hand or something on the ark. And we've got to remember that uh, God wants to put us through fiery trials for good. When the suffering starts up, the demons start up or whatever. The temptations start up to think God's not good in the suffering. And we've got to keep resisting that till we defeat that. If we're suffering, Satan tempts us. God can't be good in the suffering. Don't trust him. Well, we just got to keep saying, no, like Job, uh, this could be a good trial for me. God, give me strength to endure this patiently until it goes away. I'm not suffering all the time, and I'm not being tempted all the time, just sometimes. And I've got to learn to understand these are necessary and seek God's help to successfully deal with them. I have to be in a spiritual war, but with God's help too, I can win it. It's a war for my faith. It's a war for my love for God when I'm suffering. Can we go to a cross and still love God and still have faith in Him? Like God says we need to go to our crosses? Or do we apostatize when trouble hits or suffering hits? How are we going to handle World War III coming if we don't develop a good faith in God during evil and suffering now, which He's trying to do for us? It's just basically believe in the truth in suffering. God's here. God's a very present help in times of trouble. He may not be taking the temptation of suffering away right now but if i just keep patiently waiting it'll subside like it always has when god says that's enough suffering when that's enough temptation it'll stop this too shall pass or whatever when you're in the midst of suffering and temptation if joseph had a gave up on faith in god in a pit in slavery in a prison he would never have gotten raised up to be the second highest in command in Egypt or something. If Job gave up, he would never have got the great revelations he got later from God, and twice as much as he had before. We're supposed to be going through this world and not giving up in suffering and temptation so that we can get great careers, a kings and priests forever, in a place where there is no more suffering, heaven, after we die. And this is just the world we have to go through first before we get there. God's not asleep. God's not trying to destroy us in this world. He's fully awake. He never sleeps. And he's in full control of this world. You can trust in God's good control in an evil and suffering world today. You can let your faith in him grow through suffering, your love for him grow through suffering. When it says that you love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and strength, you get pretty tired doing that. A lot of suffering involved doing that. But yet God cherishes that suffering love and rewards it in heaven forever those that love god the most through the most suffering and temptation get the greatest rewards in heaven after they die jesus had to learn obedience through suffering we got to learn obedience through suffering so we just got to keep resisting the devil's lies god isn't evil god is not out of control he's good and he's in control like he helped Noah, he can help me. It has to be an evil and suffering world. And it can be like you're standing over hell and you're looking into it and you're seeing 90% of the population. Like the Bible says, if you get saved, the rest go to hell. And it doesn't have to bother you. You don't make any mistakes, God. You didn't have to save anybody. If you save 10%, awesome God type stuff. They had a free will choice. They chose to be your enemies, your enemies go to hell. The 10% that chose to be your friends, they're your friends and they go to heaven forever. They become the bride of your son Jesus forever. Married to the king of the universe in heaven forever. Well, it takes a lot of purifying process through fiery trials to become a spotless bride of Christ with spotless faith in God. No doubt in God, just faith in God. He's good, he's in control, even though it's an evil and suffering world. So that's some of the reasons why there's so much evil and suffering, and that's some of the reasons why God allows it. And he's trying to bring good out of it for us. So we need to hear God prophetically say, I am real. 
I want free will choice and it creates an evil suffering world. I want to help you through it, bring good out before you. I got a good suffering free place called heaven when you die. Think I'm a good God. Think I'm in full control. I'm perfect. I never make a mistake. I can help you through it, bring good out of it for you, make you happy in it, and help you not to be bothered by it. You're safe with me, Rod. You're safe with Father God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the angels wherever you go. And God can work all this suffering out like a Joseph experience for your good so that you can develop good character to be a king or a priest in heaven forever when you die. So that's a bit about trust in God's good control.